This media has been made available by Mosaic Boston Church. If you'd like to check out more resources, learn about Mosaic Boston and our neighborhood churches, or donate to this ministry, please visit mosaicboston.com. Everybody, welcome everybody. I'm so thankful to be here today. My name is Pastor Rob Conley. I am a church planter from Brockton, Massachusetts, and we have planted a church in Brockton called Resurrect Church. And I am so thankful to be actually in a building preaching today. It's been a while since um, we've actually been in the building because of our uh, climate today. So, you know, thankful to uh, Mosaic Boston, well, Mosaic Jamaica Plain, I should say, uh, and Pastor Ivy for giving me this opportunity. Um, today we are uh, continuing, and hopefully I think this is uh, probably ending this series, capping it off with our series called Woke Church. And um, I'm so glad to be able to talk about this topic, but also we know this is not an easy topic to, um, to talk about uh, because um, we've been mostly talking about uh, being woke uh, as related to the racial climate that we had in our country. So before we really get into the word, uh, we want to just uh, set the atmosphere. So if you can just indulge me for a moment and pray along with me that um, God will have his way in this service. Um, God, we want to thank you for, uh, for just being present, ever present. We want to thank you that you provide all of the answers on how we must conduct ourselves, on how we must uh, deal with issues, not in our way, but in your way that brings you glory. So we pray that at the end of the day that you get glory from uh, what is presented here today, that you would just move um, in this service. So we thank you for this opportunity to dig into your word, and we pray that we take some gold nuggets that we could apply to our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. So, um, yes, again, we are continuing this series uh, called Woke Church. And um, I know Pastor Ivy did a good job of really uh, breaking down woke. Um, it's a vernacular, but I wanted to give you uh, a working definition that we can all work with so that we're all on the same page, because I'm telling you, I'm going to be using the word woke a lot in this sermon. So we want to make sure that we all understand what it means. So we have a working definition here of, of woke. Um, woke as a political term of African-American origin refers to a perceived awareness of issues concerning social justice and racial justice. It is derived from the African-American vernacular English expression, stay woke, uh, whose grammatical aspects refer to a continual awareness of these issues. So to, to stay woke is another way of saying to be awake, right? To be awakening, right? So we want to highlight these issues and um, be aware of what's happening in our world. So we put a term on it to, to stay woke. So we're just going to break it down and just say woke today, all right? So again, um, when we've talked about staying woke, we've talked about it from a place of dealing with social injustice, and uh, being somebody coming from uh, the African-American culture, uh, I, I know all about making sure that these issues are, are highlighted. So again, um, I'm thankful for this opportunity because I believe that, you know, the Word of God actually tells us how we need to deal with these issues instead of just walking around with attention and not knowing how to address it. Um, but I want to bring it to uh, an Old Testament verse here that really helps us to dig deep into an issue that we think is new, but it actually is not, right? So we've seen this play out in scriptures. So I'm going to talk about a, a king named Josiah um, in 2 Kings, and I'm going to read the scripture, but I want to first give you a little bit of the background and understanding of what's happening here in scripture. We have the people of Israel, and they've gotten to a place where they wanted a king. So they've had these series of kings and the whole job of a king is to make sure that the people in the land are staying focused on their relationship with God. And that does not happen throughout Israel's history. So we get to a place where king after king has gotten far away from their relationship with God. And now we come to this king named Josiah. And we're going to see why he was a little bit different than the other kings in Israel's history. So here in 2 Kings 22, uh, verse 1, it says, 
Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jedidiah, the daughter of Adaiah of um, Bozkath. And he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and walked in all the way of David his father, and he did not turn aside to the right or to the left. So Josiah here is a king that actually wanted to get back to the roots, right, and actually serve God right. Again, he's coming from a line of people that have stayed away from the teachings of the Lord. And we want to talk here about staying woke, but what we really need to highlight here is how does that translate to all of the issues that we have in our society today? What do we need to be woke about? Because the vernacular of staying woke means to bring awareness of something that we're not aware of anymore. So Josiah is going to be engaged here in a situation where he is being awakened uh, by something. So again, he is one of the few kings that decided to hold on to the traditions of loving God, of worshiping God, unlike some of his predecessors. So we see here that there's a situation where this young king decides that, listen, my people are not serving God anymore, and I want to hold up these reins. So he's making sure that the temple is okay. He's making sure that people who are bringing the word that they're okay, and he's having the whole land get back on track with this mindset. So he's only going to do with what he knows to do. And sometimes that's what we do. When we don't know what to do, we just go back to whatever we have learned from growing up. How do we handle our issues of the day? How do we handle the social climate? We just do whatever we was told, whatever we know, until some type of revelation comes to us. So we see here in 2 Kings uh, 22 verse 10, uh, something that brings um, enlightenment to, uh, to what Josiah is dealing with. So it, was here, it says here, then... Um, Sharfan, the secretary, told the king, Hilkiah, the priest, has given me a book. And Sharfan read it before the king. In verse 11, then the king heard the words of the book of the law. He tore his clothes. So what happened here is there was this book called the book of the law. And the kings, their job was to read this book of the law. Now, What we will understand that to be is the Holy Scriptures. The purpose of the king was to make sure that every king had their own personal book or own personal scroll of the book of the law so that they would not forget their love and relationship with God. What happened was too many kings actually put that book aside. And over time, the kings had lost the books. Nobody knew where the books were. It was to the point where Israel wasn't even holding up the temple that was built for them. So the temple was destroyed and the book was not held at a high regard anymore. Now, we could probably relate. Maybe we know sometimes that we've, in our lives, we haven't held the Bible in high regards anymore. So when it comes to what we actually believe, we probably don't believe as much as we think we believe because we haven't been studying the Word of God. We haven't been practicing the Word of God. So then we can't live the Word of God. And then we wonder why we have issues in our society. So we see here that the king was awakened because he was given the books of the law again. So what we need to understand about this, this vernacular of woke really means awakening. Or we could say Revelation, something was revealed to him. And I think that's a better word for us to understand uh, using the word revelation because when you reveal something, you are uncovering something that's already there. And the books of the law was already written as a guideline for the kings to follow, thus for Israel to follow. But they were living in a way like this truth wasn't already, wasn't there because it wasn't presented to them because they didn't hold it in high regard in their genealogy, in their family line. So it had to be revealed to him again that the truth of how we need to deal with societal issues, how we need to live as people of God was already there. God already had a plan on how we need to deal with today's climate 
from back in the garden, from the first time that Adam and Eve ate the fruit. But because of the lifestyle of getting away from the truth, we've now fallen to another issue where we forgot what the truth actually is. And then we live in a lifestyle of just making up our own way of living. So it was revealed unto Josiah what the words said. And then he tore his clothes. Now, this is just a little bit of, of church history. Usually what happens when you are grieved by something that is so, you know, heart-wrenching, what you would do is tear your clothes to show the emotions that you are having in respect to what you have just heard. Now, sometimes we stop right there. When we hear something that is tragic, like George Floyd, or like Breonna Taylor, or like going way back to like Rodney King, or way back to like Emmett Till, or a whole nation being tortured, or a whole culture of people being tortured, we may just show our emotions. And then we don't know what else to do. We may say, why don't we just go and march? Why don't we just join a rally? And then we don't know what else to do. And then people get aggravated because they feel like, well, decade after decade, all we've done was flood the streets and hold up signs. And we don't know what else to do. How do we actually see change? Well, God is telling us we need to be woke as a church. We need to be awakened as a church and have something revealed to us, which is an answer that was already there. So we look at the fact that the scriptures already had an answer on how we need to deal with people that don't look like us. It was already in scriptures. Now we could debate on what the scriptures actually say. This ain't the time for that, right? So we're going to assume that we all agree that the scriptures were inspired by God. So we can even look in like the books of Deuteronomy and it would show us how did Israel deal with people who weren't of their land? How did they deal with foreigners? When we talk about things like slavery, the Bible was more talking more about like a serfdom than actual slavery. And that's a study for another time. But what God had showed us was an outline of how to deal with people that don't look like you, that didn't come from your home that wasn't brought up the same way that you was brought up, and how to show them love, because at the end of the day, everyone was created by God. So this is what King Josiah had to deal with. We look at his history, and we see that King Josiah started his reign at a pretty young age. Now his father was an evil king. His father was an evil king. And he come from a line of evil kings. There was probably one or two that actually looked towards God, but the majority of them, evil kings. So his father was actually killed at a very young age for, for Josiah. So he didn't have this influence of this evil king of a father influencing him as much. But we talked about his mother, Jedediah. We don't know much about her. But what we probably could assume if somebody was teaching Josiah how to stay connected to God is probably his mother. At the end of the day, what we see is a king that actually goes and changed the landscape or the mindset of Israel was somebody that was attached to God through his upbringing versus the rest of Israel who were separated from their upbringing, which also had God entwined in their upbringing. So we see here, this is um, Josiah's um, reality. Every king was supposed to have um, the book of the law. Not all of them did. God's word shows us how to deal with people who don't look like us. And we have to understand that racism at its core is demonic. Because racism looks for an opportunity to separate us. And God is about unity. So what's happening here is that we had an issue where we had King Josiah dealing with um, some divinity in his people because you have him bringing the word of God, but you also had influence of foreigners all around that was trying to lead Israel in another direction that wasn't showing the love. So we see here in Romans 10, where it talks about this for, um, for even in the New Testament era, uh, verse 14, how would, they, how would they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have not heard? 
And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? It is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. So, yes, this is a New Testament verse, but it still applies here. How could Israel follow God if even their kings weren't following God? How could we expect that we um, treat people who don't look like us in a godly fashion if we're not living in a godly fashion? So for us to handle these issues in today, we need to first understand who we are and whose we are in order to address this in the right way. Israel wasn't serving God because the kings weren't serving God. And we see here in the king moment that he was re it was revealed to him and he tore his clothes to show that he was pained by what was happening. But now there are a few questions that he needs to ask himself. First question we need to ask ourselves, the same thing that he's asking himself is, are you woke? Are you woke? Are you awakened to what God says in the scriptures on how we need to deal with societal issues? And if we get to that point where somebody's making us aware of these issues and it's, and it's not hard to do, all you have to do is turn on the television, look at any newscast or go on your social media and look at anybody's feed. Somebody's going to highlight the issues. The second question we go from there is, how do we respond? How do we respond once we are woke? How do we respond? And third, what are some of the things that we are not doing as a church today that we should get back to? We're not looking for new ideas here in the scriptures. We look into uh, rehash what God has already said. You see, the Bible is not the Constitution. It doesn't need any amendments. What the Bible has is words that stood the test of time, and it still will stand the test of time. Until we meet Christ, not one word should be changed in the original Greek or the Hebrew, because God already knew what was going to happen, and he knew what we were going to need. So what do we do? What are we not doing as a church that we need to get back to? We need to get back to the Word of God. And we need to understand for every biblical principle we ignore, there is a social injustice that is developed. For every biblical principle that is ignored, there is a social injustice that is developed. So we focused on the last couple of weeks on race, but now we need to get back to an issue about the Word of God and His importance in our lives that not, it's not only going to deal with racial issues. If we get back to the Word of God and apply it, we won't only handle racial issues, but we'll also handle political issues. We'll also handle social injustice issues, identity issues, sexual issues, etc. You see, if we are woke and realize what we are not living out and get back to that, all of the issues that plague our society today will be handled. That is why we highlight Jesus. That is why we highlight the Word of God. Because He doesn't have the answer for some things. He has the answer for all things. I'll tell you, as a person of color, I ask myself, how do I want to handle the issues in my society? Do I want to handle it on a political realm? Some are called to do that. Do I want to join the NAACP? Do I want to join the Black Panthers movement? Do I want to join the Black Lives Matter movement? You know, we could probably touch one or two of those issues in those groups. But being a person of Christ, living out the scriptures, having a relationship with God, and knowing that he has made everybody in his image, and not seeing this thing as a racial issue, which is a lie from the pit of hell, because there's not many races, we're all a part of the human race, but because I'm a person of color, I know what the tricks are, and the trick is to see that because I don't look like a white brother or an Asian brother or a Native American brother, that I cannot see them as being my brother. 
The only thing that separates us is a relationship with God. And once we come together under Christ, all of those other issues will be dealt with. Not ignored, will be dealt with. And that is what God wants to bring us back to. Back in 2 Kings 23, it says, Then the king sent, and all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem were gathered to him. And the king went up to the house of the Lord, and with him all the men of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem and the priests and the prophets, all the people, both small and great. And he read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant that had been found in the house of the Lord. And the king stood by the pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all his, with all his heart and all his soul to perform the words of the covenant that were written in the book. And all the people joined the covenant. So what do we have here? We have here that King Josiah was making sure that all the people in Israel heard the word of God, that they knew the Torah, that they were getting back to what they lost because how they were treating themselves and how they were treating foreigners was not according to how God wanted them to live. God said there's a problem that happened in the garden and the way that we get back to what he really wanted the world to be, we had to follow his words because his words were principles for life. His words showing how we didn't make ourselves, so we shouldn't be the ones to decide how we are going to live out this world. So God has given us these, these principles for life. So just tearing our clothes is not enough. We must live for God to change society. So let's look at some of the things that, that happens once we, we do this, right? When, when Josiah was getting back to the Word of God, and having these people get back to the word of God, we see these uh, seven principles here that, that helped us, right? The temple was repaired. The temple was repaired. These are some of the things that we need to be awakened to. Number one, the temple was repaired. What does that mean for us as New Testament believers? It means that the temple is not just a building anymore. We are the temple of God. So we first, before we are looking for change in society, we first have to have the change happen in us. Not just being aware, but a change happened in us. So we had to be aware of who we are. Our temple has to be changed. We need to give our lives to God to repair this temple for God. We need to return to the word of God. What does that mean? That means that we need to separate ourselves from what everybody else wants to do that is negative and how to handle societal issues and get back to the way God wants us to handle societal issues. A biblical word is used for that. It's called sanctification. You separate yourself from what everybody else is doing so that you can be used for a holy purpose. God doesn't want you to just handle social justice issues. He wants you to show the love of Christ so that you can compel people to understand that they need to give their lives to Christ. So we need to get back. Third, we need to allow conviction of sin, right? We need to be convicted of sin. Also, fourth, Put away idolatry, which means the things that we hold as high importance. This is key. Also, put away immorality. Now, convicted of sin, put away idolatry, put away immorality. That is allowing yourself to be discipled, allowing yourself to be taught by God, and allowing yourself to know that the truth of what God is saying here, when you are awakened to something, you usually go and tell somebody else about it. So to handle these societal issues, first we need to apply that truth to our own lives, and then we need to share that truth with others so that they can apply it to their lives. You want to use biblical terms for that? Okay, discipleship and, and evangelism, right? So, but let's go back to those three, four, and five. Convicted of sin, we know that the way that we were living was wrong. We know that society, we can deem that it was wrong. Put away idolatry. That may be something as, you know, um, money. That may be something as a relationship. But even as a person of color, sometimes I have to put away idolatry and say, what's more important, my relationship with God or my blackness? Now, it might be hard for some of my white brothers and some of my Asian brothers and other counterparts to say that, 
But I'm going to say this here, as a person of color, what's more important to me? That I cry for my blackness or cry for my relationship with God? Does that mean that I negate the fact that I'm black? Does that mean I put away the side, the fact that I'm black? No. To me, truly be who God has made me to be is to represent him through who I am. And that is highlighted because we don't want to just say, forget what I've been hurt for so many years and now let's follow another way to counteract that hurt. I can't make everybody tell me I'm sorry because I've lived a life of being a black person and I've been called the N-word and I've been racially profiled and I've been arrested and I've been all these things. I don't need everybody to tell me I'm sorry for how I've lived. What I need is to figure out how we're going to go from here to where God wants us to go further in life. So we need to be awakened to first there's an issue and then we need to be awakened on how the answer should be addressed. So um, all these things happened afterwards, you know, the Passover and all this stuff was reinstated. Um, so that just goes back to highlighting traditions that help us in our walk with God, doing the things that remind us of who God is, and also creating new traditions that will continuously remind us of who God is. Same thing with furthering uh, reformation. Josiah was looking for reformation, some reforms to happen in his society. We're looking for reformation in our society. So we are looking for these reforms, and that's great. The question is, how do we reform? That's what the Word of God wants to lay out to us. You know, something that strikes me as interesting was Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass, the abolitionist, fighting hard for, um, for African Americans, wanting to help slaves to be free. That's great. And I'll never forget when I went to visit his house that I found out that Frederick Douglass' um, wife had passed away and he remarried. And he remarried a white woman. Her name was Helen Pitts Douglas. And he had a wedding and even his kids didn't even go to his wedding. Because they said, how could you fight for blacks and you marry a white woman? Well, as the man of God Frederick Douglass was, just because I've been wronged as a black man doesn't mean I have to hate white people. So how do we reform our society? We have to use the word of God, not our own feelings, not what our flesh wants to do. If we don't, uh, if we're not woke to what God wants us to do, even Jesus' death on the cross would mean nothing to us. The Great Commission says in Matthew 28, then the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When he saw them, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. When we are woke, we're teaching others to be woke as well. A woke, a woke church wakes others. How God wants us to handle social issues, he's laid it out. Are you ready to be woke? Are you ready to deal with people who don't look like you? Are you ready to deal with what comes with that? You know, I have a friend who was in prison for 22 years, African-American, for murder. In jail is where he gave his life to Christ. Are you ready for someone like that to sit next to you in church? I have another friend who's a transgender, been molested at a very young age. Are you ready for somebody like that to sit next to you in church? Are we ready to truly deal with what comes with being woke, with being exposed to how God wants us to handle issues instead of how our feelings want us to handle issues, instead of how our neighbors want us to handle issues? Our prayer is that we get back to the truth and to show the love of Christ. Josiah, where he failed, Jesus made up for. Josiah, where he was short 
and saying, we need to get back to the temple. We need to kill all of these lambs. Well, Jesus said, I only got one lamb that I need to kill. And when that lamb died, he handled all the issues that all the little intricate things that were in the temple was trying to handle. All these other social injustice issues that we're trying to handle, we can encompass all that with a relationship, a loving relationship with God. Don't just try to handle the racial issues, the racial tension in our society. Handle all of the issues in our society through the eyes of a loving Savior who loves even the person who hates you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for giving us the truth. We thank you for showing us examples in the word of God, even with somebody like Josiah, Lord God. Father, even after Josiah had lived, Lord, we can see that the people of God went back to a negative way of living. We can see that the people of God didn't continuously follow you for the rest of their lives. But that does not mean that Josiah didn't make a difference in our lives. So, Lord, we pray that we could even hold on to the spirit of somebody like Josiah, Lord God, and know that every life matters. Every time we tell somebody of Christ, it's not a waste. We know that your scripture says in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, our labor in the Lord is not in vain. If we work hard enough to tell people about who you are, who you truly are, life will change. And we can thank you for this in Jesus' mighty name. So be it, and amen.